Welcome to my introduction to networking course, typically abbreviated ITN. This will be for the CCNA version 7 curriculum. Hello and welcome. This is going to be lab 11.7.5, the subnetting scenario. So let's go ahead and jump on in. I'm going to modify my window a little bit. You're going to notice Packet Tracer has the addressing table blank. We're going to be creating addressing schemes and filling this chart out. So, two main objectives, designing the scheme and assigning the addresses to devices. So, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm actually going to snip my screen so that we can work through a, uh, an example. All right, snip. All right, so, well, actually, before I do that, I want to read some more of the scenario so it makes more sense. Based on the topology, how many subnets, how many bits must be borrowed to support the subnets in the topology, how many subnets does this create, how many usable hosts per subnet. So, subnets 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's what we're going to work through. So right now, this is in the 32 spot. Uh, I'm going to grab my pin. So our second subnet we're going to go ahead and do 64. For network 3, we're going to do 60, uh, 64 plus 32, which would be 96. And then last, 128. What is really funny is this is a little weird. Um, I don't understand how they came up with a lot of these numbers. So going back to the questions, based on a topology, how many subnets are needed? We have one, two, three, four, five networks that are needed. How many bits must be borrowed to support the number of subnets in the topology? We need to be able to borrow three subnets, or three bits for our subnet. How many subnets does this create? It will create eight subnets with 32 maximum hosts or 30 usable hosts. Calculate the binary value for the first five subnets the first two subnets have been done for you. So that's what we did here. So if we know the first network is 192.168.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
that does not give us appropriate information. So I actually had to take a, a little bit more indirect route to get this answer. I actually had to look at the next part, and that's how I figured out what we needed. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. So we know that we need at least 25. This is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So that gives us our subnet. That allows me to figure out that we're doing groups of 32, and that allowed me to do E. I had to do F before doing E. So from here, let's fill out this chart. I can't write in Packet Tracer, so it always frustrates me because it's how are you supposed to give answers if you aren't able to write things out. So we already know the network is So I'm not going to write the first three octets. We always start with 0. We're increasing by 32, 64, 96, 128, 160, 192, 224. That gives us all of our network IDs. I do the broadcasts next. No, oh, did I do my math wrong? Yes, I did. Thirty one, sixty three, ninety five. 127. So what's in the middle? 1 through 30. 33, 65, 97, 129, 161, 193, 225, 254, 222, 190, 158, 126, 94, 62. Remember, addresses can only be used once. You cannot have duplicate addresses, so we are building out a number range. All right, that takes care of our subnet chart. So now let's get to the configuration portion. Assign subnet 0 to LAN 0. That will be 192.168.100.0 slash 27. Assign subnet 1 to the gig ethernet 01. That would be 192.168.100.32. For subnet 2, that would be 192.168.100.64 slash 27. Sign subnet 3, that would be 192.168.100.96 slash 27. And then lastly, assign subnet 4 to the WAN link, which would be 192.168.100.128. Document the addressing scheme and assign the first usable to each subnet to R2. For the LAN link, assign the last usable to the WAN link. Assign the second usable to in the attached subnet to the switches. Assign the last usable to the PCs. What I'm getting is, let's fill out this address table. 
All right. First, again, we already know this is the uh, network ID. So I'm just doing the X. Everything is going to be slash 27. Slash 27, slash 27, slash 27, slash 27, 27, slash 27, slash 27, slash 27. All right, so gig zero zero is one, gig zero one is thirty three, serial is going to be one twenty nine, router two gig zero zero is sixty five, then gig zero one is ninety seven, gig up uh, sorry serial zero zero zero. The other end of this guy one twenty eight. I want to double check. Yeah, because the WAN link is. Oh, last usable, last usable. So, 158. That's why I was double checking. Uh, VLANs were told the second usable, so 2, 34, 66, 98. And then the PCs will be 30. Last usable, 62, 94, 126. All right, gateway. So these will be the routers. So VLAN will be one, because that's attached to network zero. 33, that's network one. 65, network 2, 97, network 3, and then PCs, 1, 33, 65, 97. All right, we built out our address chart. Taking that off the screen. So I've did this portion right here. Now we need to actually do the assigning, configuring of everything. And then we have to verify at the end. So let's go ahead. Let's hop over to R1. I already noticed between the two routers. Enable, show IP and brief. So we already have the serial interface configured. So we're not do touching the serial interface. All right, we need to set up interface gig zero slash zero. IP address 192.168.100.1. No shot. Interface gig zero slash one. Thirty three. No. Oh, 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 oh. I'm hitting the up arrow. Slash 27. 
is a 224. So that's a typo. So I'm going to go back to giga01. 224. There we go. No shut. All right, that takes care of R1. Nope, we're not doing R2. We're going to go ahead and do switch 3. Get to global configuration, so enable, comp T, interface VLAN 1, spell everything correctly. IP address 192.168.100.66.224. Do the right subnet. No shutdown. And the default gateway for this should be 65. So exit IP default gateway 192.168.100.65. All right, and we need to configure PC th uh, 4. IP address 192.168.100 or 126. 255.255.255.224. Default gateway is 97. 97. One eight two one six eight dot one hundred dot ninety seven. All right, we have one hundred percent completion. Let's finish it off by doing step four. So I'm going to go from PC four. I'm going to ping PC one one eight two one six eight dot one hundred dot thirty. ARP should happen, so timeout. And then reply. Perfect. Can I ping PC2? ARP, timeout, three responses. Perfect. Can I ping PC3? ARP, timeout, and then it should go through. Perfect. Check results. All items complete. Questions, thoughts, concerns, please let me know. Thank you. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. Again, with this material, being able to ask questions and discuss some of the topics in the lecture help build long-term retention. So do not be afraid to communicate with this topic. Again, I'm here if you need anything. Thank you.